We live in a racially charged culture, and sometimes that carries a zero-sum mentality. In other words, you must lose in order for me to win. But what if there was a third option? Take a look. Miles McPherson spent four years in the NFL with the San Diego Chargers and was known as the Jesus Guy. Today, he's the senior pastor of Rock Church in San Diego. One of the most pressing issues Miles has dealt with is that of racism. He grew up in a predominantly black neighborhood in Long Island, New York, and went to school in an all-white neighborhood. Miles, who is mixed, couldn't fit in anywhere. Culture always tries to force us to choose sides. Are you for me or against me? Everything is rooted in an us versus them mentality. In his book, The Third Option, Miles encourages us to unify our communities and to better love our neighbors equally, starting with ourselves. Well, please welcome back to the 700 Club, Miles McPherson. It's always just a pleasure to have it's you so here. It's so good to be here. And what a good book you've written, The Third Option. Before we talk about what The Third Option is, I want to ask you to just kind of recall being caught in the nation's racial divide really from the time you were a child. I, I grew up in a black neighborhood, went to school in a white neighborhood. Wow. And I'm mixed. So when I was in the white neighborhood, I got called names. When I was in the black neighborhood, yeah. I got called names. And okay. so I had it, I was experiencing on both sides. However, when I played football, we all got along. We had a common goal and a common enemy, which was the other team. And now as a pastor of a, a multiracial church, and we have, yes. I can't even tell you how many nationalities we have. We all worship God every day, and so I see it, and I, and I see how it works. For the past four years, you played in the NFL, and so you are very aware of what's going on in the NFL today. What do you think about all of this? What's, how do you react? To well, it? I played 30-something years ago, not the past four years. <laughs> I yeah, played, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wish it was the past four years. Hey, yeah, 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 exactly. You know, football, football is probably, and sports is probably the greatest uniter in our yes. country. And, and so I think that's what I focus on, all the guys who are getting together. If you watch games, black guys and white guys, who, especially in football, mm -hmm. that's mostly black and white, a few Hispanics. Are, are family and they're committed to each other and they're committed to winning and and rooting for each other and that's what we need in our culture why doesn't that spill into our culture you know why don't we see it now instead what's happening in our culture which is so divisive on many issues not just racial right. is spilling into the whole athletic arena. Right. You know, in every race conversation, it's about us versus them. Yes. Those are the two options. The third option is that we honor what we have in common. All of us have more similarities and differences, and that's what this book is for. It's designed to give people tools on how to understand how much, mm -hmm. how much similar, how similar we are, yeah. and how we can build bridges and break down the walls between us. Is that is discovering our similarity the thing that ultimately helps us appreciate our differences? <laughs> I mean, I, why do differences divide? It's like you don't have to have you don't have to worship the same way I do. Exactly. It's, it's your way. It's my way. Why can we not? appreciate that. I, I th you know, we're sinners, right? We're prideful yeah. and we group with people who are like us. And as soon as we group with people who are like us, we identify people who are not like us yeah. and there's a separation. But if we realize that we're 99.5% genetically the same, yeah. more than anything, we're all made in the image of the same God. And the image of God in you is not mm -hmm. inferior or superior to mine. So how can we learn how to build the, build bridges, break down the walls that they are telling us we're different? You know, one of the probably the biggest things I learned right in this book is that there people cannot separate the concept of being racially offensive and not being a racist. Mm -hmm. There are some people who are racist, but most of us are just biased. Yes. And we say things that are uncomfortable with other people or offensive, but we not we don't necessarily mean it to hurt them. Yeah. And if people can separate those two things and learn and take a posture, I want to learn. How can I be more honoring to you? How can I be more loving to you? Because but you have to separate. The, you have to be able to accept that you can be racially offensive and not mm -hmm. be a racist. So in this book, I lay out blind spots people have. Things that they say that they may not realize are offensive. Things that they, things that they believe that they that may not be uh, accurate. You know, the greatest commandment is to love God with your heart, mind, and soul. Yes. And just the second commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. But if I rename you something less than neighbor, I don't have yeah. to love you. And so, if we think of the names we call people, the names we let the media put on people that we mm -hmm. accept, we we dehumanize people. Yeah. 
And so I would challenge people to put the label neighbor on everybody they see yeah. and say, I got to love you like my neighbor and start there. That's an easy place to start from because, you know, it's, it's not just the names that we call, it's attitudes that we harbor. Exactly. How is your church accepting <laughs> this third option and making a difference? You mentioned that your church is racially mixed. Yeah, we, we call ourselves a Skittle church, Skittles church. <laughs> we, don't, all we, we don't even try to <laughs> measure how many people are in there. Uh, and we serve together. We have yes. small groups together. We worship together. Um, and they're accepting it like a champ. I mean, we, we every Sunday I say, turn to someone near you that doesn't look like you. Yeah. That's not a hard thing. They just have to turn right or left because it's right there. <laughs> and give that person a hug, tell them you love them. So we practice it every day mm -hmm. because when those people who some have been walking with the Lord for a long time and some haven't yeah. at all, we have white supremacists that have come to, <laughs> that come to our church. When they leave the building, they have mm -hmm. practice. They, just, they were just in church with someone who was different. Yeah. And so when they go to work or they go to school, or they're managing someone different. They say, you know what? I just love somebody and told someone that looked like you at church that I love you. So we're practicing diversity and inclusion. Let me think inclusion. this through. Yeah. Let me think this through because it, it can work. Your wife also experienced ridicule growing up. In what way? My wife's mother was white and she grew up in a black uh, housing project. So they were the, she was the only white person, her mom, in the whole housing project. Wow. And she was in fights uh, all the time. Uh, her, mom, mom, her mom was in fights all the time. My wife was getting pull, escorted to and from school in elementary school by the police. Um, luckily, she didn't grow up hating brown people because she married me. <laughs> <laughs> but again, her story is in the book, and her story, as, as well as stories from people from all kinds of nationalities, mm -hmm. give principles in the book that comply to every person all around the world. And so all of us have things to learn about how to honor each other yes. better and, and how, to honor, how, how to honor and acknowledge the humanity that we all have. That's the biggest thing that we need to do. You know, your book just reminded me of that song that we've sung for so many years, Let There Be Peace on Earth, and let it begin with me. I yes. mean, somebody's got to take the first step, yes. right? Yes. And so don't wait for your neighbor to do it. Be the neighbor that takes the first step. And it's not going to be the government. It's going to oh, be us. So truth. I need to be able to look at you and say, you're my neighbor and I love you. Yeah. You're my neighbor and I love and you. And you Miss America, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Miss America. <laughs> You're hilarious. The book is amazing. It's called The Third Option. It opens discussion that we all need to have, thought processes that we all need to go through. It's available wherever books are sold. Thank you for what you've written and for what you're doing. It's my pleasure. It's a light in the darkness.